Hi, I'm Shashank Bhargav and you're listening to Three Things, the Indian Express news show. On Saturday, the 15th of April, gangsters Atik Ahmed and Ashraf Ahmed, both of them brothers, were shot dead by two people in Prayagraj on live TV. At the time, they were actually being taken to a hospital for a routine medical checkup, which was compulsory because they had been in police custody. Indian Express's Bhupendra Pandey walks us through that moment. So, the moment they were brought there, they got down from the vehicle. They were just walking towards the entrance of the hospital. When suddenly some media person, especially the TV journalist, they appeared over there. And they were about to ask questions from Atik and Ashraf. And when I think one journalist would have asked one question. And uh, Atik was just about to speak when suddenly in the video a pistol's muzzle is seen and from point blank range Atik was shot at his left temple. Atik was shot, then at the same time, his brother Ashraf who was standing beside him. He was also shot at and then two shooters, they were seen in the video shooting at both the brothers lying on the ground and they both emptied their uh, magazines of the pistols. And again, all of this is happening on live TV. Live because the, the cameras were on. This is the first time when such a live murder or shootout had taken place. Now, what is interesting to note is that after the shooters kill the two brothers, they raise their hands to surrender and chant Jai Shri Ram. Actually, they were just onlookers like others. I think more than 15 to 18 policemen were there. They had brought both the brothers. And they were equipped with firearms also. All the policemen were there and they were armed. Not a single bullet was fired from their side. While uh, these two shooters, it was more than 40 seconds or something, they kept firing. For 40 seconds? Almost 40 seconds they were kept firing. And no resistance from any side. Obviously, why the journalists and others, they don't have anything to resist. But policemen were there. They did nothing. They did not fire even a single bullet. And Bhupendra, this entire thing raises a lot of questions. There is a lot to unpack just in this one moment that was captured on live TV. So let us begin by talking about these two brothers, Atik and Ashraf. Tell us who these two brothers were. Actually, Atik is the elder one and the leader of the gang. His crime record started in 1979 when he was hardly 17 years of the age when he committed his first murder as per the police records. And the police records say that he had more than 100 criminal cases against uh, Atik. Obviously, those criminal cases included murder, extortion, attempt to murder, grabbing of property and all that. All the heinous crimes. And this Ashraf, uh, his brother, he entered in the crime world with his brother later. I mean, in late 80s. In fact, against Ashraf also, more than 58 cases were lost against him. And Bhupendra, could you give a sense to our listeners, especially to those who are not from northern India, about how big of a gangster Atik Ahmed was? So, Atik is a name actually in UP, Uttar Pradesh. It's not that only in eastern UP, like Prayagraj is part of eastern UP. So, it's not only eastern UP, but entire UP, entire Uttar Pradesh. Atik's name is known to even in the remote villages. People know who Atik Ahmed was. I mean, uh, businessmen, politicians, common men, all were always terrified. And you know, Yogi Adityanath's government, since it came to power, has been talking about the problem of crime in the state. Was Atik the face of that in a way? Yeah, he's actually, there are other uh, gang lords in UP. But Atik was obviously among top five, or say top three, to be precise. Right, and Atik and Ashraf were from a middle-class family. In fact, their father used to ride a Tonga in Prayagraj. 
And as far as Atik is concerned, his first brush with crime, like you mentioned, happened pretty early on. But he later also entered politics. Talk about how that came about. Actually, there used to be a name, Chan Daba, who used to be a big name in Prayagraj. And was he also a criminal? He was also a criminal turned politician. He was also a gangster, Chan Daba. Used to be mentor of Atik Ahmed. And Atik Ahmed eliminated him as well. It was in late 80s, I think, when he killed. He was named actually in killing of Chan Daba. So actually, Samajwadi Party gave him the ticket. Initially, he contested as an independent. But later on, uh, he became MP on Samajwadi Party ticket. He has been four-time MLA also. I mean, recently in the assembly session, there was face-off between two big leaders. I mean, the Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath and the leader of opposition, Akhilesh Yadav, both attacking and counter-attacking. CM Adityanath saying that Atik was always patronized by the Samajwadi Party. Jo ye apradi hai, jo ye mafia hai, aakhir ye pali kiske dwara gaye hai? बात जवाब आ जाए ये जब अभी आपका नाम तो नहीं लेंगे आपने जवाब आ जाए जिस माफिया के खिलाफ एफ जो भी है किसी का नाम किसी का नाम तो नहीं है सच नहीं कि समाजवादी पार्टी ने उन्हें सांसद बनाया था so obviously this is a trend in the pradesh always whoever gaining some name or bad name in up he gets easy entry in politics because of the sheer clout they have yeah yeah you know people are scared of them they get vote very easily so like others atik also entered in politics and from what we understand his last election was in 2019 where he actually ran against prime minister narendra prime modi prime minister modi as an independent candidate this was in varanasi varanasi yes okay so you mentioned that he was a four time mla he also ran as an independent what would you say was the peak of his political career when he became mp 1996 from fulpur uh, lok sabha constituency which is known as a decorated constituency because tawala nehru used to contest from this constituency fulpur is a very you know prominent and that he won as sp candidate so that was the peak time in politics for atik and later on he start obviously he already had gained but after 96 he gained prominence not only in underworld but in politics as well our uh, political parties usually were not ignore him though bsp didn't give him ticket but at some point of time he gained support from bsp as well so that was the cloud because it's not only atik contesting the election it was like atik helping that particular party getting votes in that particular district not only one constituency but other constituencies as well such a cloud he used to enjoy Right and now let's talk about what first put Atik in jail. Now Atik had first gone to jail in the Rajupal case. Rajupal had been a BSP leader and was killed in 2005 a few months after he won an assembly election seat. And he was actually running against Ashraf Ahmed, Atik's brother of course. And both Ashraf and Atik were accused of killing him. So talk about that case a bit. actually the enmity with the rajupal was with ashraf his brother because rajupal defeated ashraf in the election assembly election and he became mla that was the motive that was the reason why ashraf was angry and ashraf was the main accused for killing but atik was the co accused atik got arrested rather surrendered and ashraf went up absconding but he too surrendered later but uh, then also atik used to running his gang from behind the bars and cases were being lost against him and not only the false cases actually he was committing orchestrating all his you know nefarious activities and all that okay so even while being in jail he was able to run his gang and commit crimes when did his decline start obviously decline began after say 2018 after this bjp government came to power in other governments he used to do anything and get away only the cases were lost against him and he used to take care of that even behind the bars there was no one to stop him or prevent him or taking any strong action against him when bjp government came to power he committed two big crimes like one when he was in devaria jail actually he was transferred from nani to devaria jail in bjp government 
Nani jail is it is in his area in Prayagraj. But even in Devariya jail, which is is nine hours or eight hours distance from Prayagraj to Devariya jail. Even in sitting in Devariya jail, he used to get his rivals kidnapped, businessmen kidnapped, brought to the jail cell where his Atik was there. He used to torture them inside the jail, making them to do what he wants. like transferring property to his men or getting something done or for extortion so all these things were going on when bjp government i mean yogi adityanath started taking stern action against him and he finally was shifted from up to amdavad jail just to stop his criminal activities here so that was the uh, time of decline because he was physically removed from his area yeah it was not easy to take someone from prayagraj or from up to amdavad all the way and he getting that much influence there inside Ahmedabad and Bhupendra we are talking about him being accused in the Rajupal murder case and so many other charges that were filed against him over the years but his first conviction actually came just this year on the 28th of March talk about what was this case that he was convicted in actually that was the case of Umesh Pal's kidnapping Umesh Pal had lost the case of kidnapping because he was then witness in the case of rajupal murder case okay so just to get this straight atik was already in judicial custody because he was accused in the killing of rajupal but he gets convicted in the kidnapping of the witness in the rajupal murder case yes that's true so in that 2007 umesh pal's kidnapping case right now after umesh pal was murdered by atik's men yogi adityanath made a comment in the parliament tell us what that was yeah it happened uh, very next day so that shootout took place on 24th of feb and on 25th february in assembly there was again a face off between akhilesh yadav and yogi adityanath and because the opposition was shouting this shootout had taken place and there is no law and order in up and all that then only uh, yogi adityanath had said is mafia ko mitti mein mila dunga kya ye sach nahi कि जिस अतीक अहमद के खिलाफ पीड़ित परिवारों ने मुकदमा दर्ज कराया उसके परिवार के खिलाफ वह समाजवादी पार्टी के द्वारा पोषित माफिया है और उसकी कमर पर तोड़ने का काम हमारी सरकार ने किया है और फिर भी क्या कर रही है जिसे इस माफिया को मिट्टी में मिला देंगे राइट इन दिस कॉमेंट बाय द चीफ मिनिस्टर इज वेरी सिग्निफिकेंट बिकॉज वॉट ही सीम्स टू बी इंसिनुएटिंग इज दैट वील टेक केयर ऑफ आतिक एंड अशरफ and that's what ends up happening and the other important thing to note is that these brothers they had even approached the court regarding their safety right but the court had denied them that actually their uh, submission was atik had gone to supreme court ashraf had uh, filed petition in prayagraj court they both were seeking that they should not be handed over to the police in remand in custody and there should be uh, a directive from the court that whatever legal proceedings have to take place should be done through video conferencing and if it is not possible then he should be taken from jail to prayagraj under security of paramilitary force not under security of up police that was his actually request to the court which court had rejected that petition saying that the state machinery will take care of your security Also earlier we talked about Yogi Adityanath's comment ki you know mitti mein mila denge but even in the past we have seen him actually commend the UP police after police encounters have taken place could you talk about what has been the chief minister's attitude regarding encounter killings of gangsters or even alleged gangsters actually cm has always been saying earlier also in some interviews he said ki jo apradhi aparadh karega usko thok diya jayega तो जो इलीगल स्लॉटरिंग कर रहे थे तो तो बेरोजगार होंगे ना लेकिन बेरोजगार के लिए उनको मजदूरी करनी पड़ेगी मनरेगा उनके लिए है वे लोग अगर अपराध करेंगे ठोक दे जाएंगे और वही कार्य हम कर रहे थे बट ही वॉज वेरी फॉर्म सेंग दैट इफ द क्रिमिनल्स आर अप टू डूइंग सच थिंग्स और टेकिंग लॉ इन देयर हैंड्स सो दे विल बी टेकन केयर ऑफ so cm never you know shied away of this he always is seen standing with the police encounter killing is not bad they should be killed in encounters if they are doing something wrong if a criminal is firing at police police have all the rights to fire back or retaliate this is what he says 
And we just want to mention that the Thok Doge comment he made was in 2017 in an Aapki Adalat interview. But Bhupendra being tough on crime and gangsters has been one of the main promises of the Yogi government, right? Yeah, in 2022, assembly polls, Yogi was presented as this is the top man who has made law and order of UP. See how better it is now as compared to previous governments. So he's a man of law and order. He's seen as bulldozer, encounters, taking action against criminals. So that is what he's known for that. Yogi's image is that only. It's not about development of UP and nothing. And under his government, what is the public sentiment regarding this in the state? Public says that uh, after Yogi came, then only the law and order is seen. The good law and order is seen. People are praising in UP. I mean, it's not only the party men. Seeing, it's like he has the image of taking care of law and order and crime control. And after these killings, what has been the reaction of the opposition in the state? Very strongly, especially Samajwadi party. First, when uh, Atik San Asad was killed in encounter, Akhilesh Yadav was the one, Samajwadi party chief. Then Mayavati also reacted very sharply. Congress also did Priyanka Gandhi, saying that uh, fake encounters are being taken place and there is no place for uh, court and all that. Justice is being taken by state government and all that. So that was very strongly opposed. Even this Saturday incident also, they reacted very strongly, very sharply. आज हम ये खबर सुन रहे हैं उत्तर प्रदेश फेक इनकाउंटर का उत्तर प्रदेश बन गया है उत्तर प्रदेश में फेक इनकाउंटर है अधिकारी अपनी कुर्सी बचाने के लिए अधिकारी अपना सब कुछ दाव पे रख करके सरकार के दबाव में ये घटनाएं कर रहे हैं ऑल्सो भूपेंद्र वेन वी टॉक अबाउट दिस किलिंग वॉट आर द थिंग्स दैट रिमेन अनआंसर्ड अबाउट इट लाइक फॉर एग्जाम्पल वॉट डू वी रियली नो about the three men that were involved in it actually all the three youths belong to different districts of up far off districts and uh, nobody knew about them earlier very small time criminals only two because the criminal cases are against only two the third one has no criminal record who did not fire but he was with them so the first thing why did they choose to attack atik and uh, ashraf Did they didn't have any uh, you know known motive for attacking them were they part of any rival gang no no they don't have any association they do not belong to prayagraj they haven't met atik and ashraf before so there was no direct link why did they choose to you know attack and that too the man of such profile even the big mafias or big dons or big criminals used to keep distance and these two small time criminals they attack them so the unanswered question in this shootout post shootout is how these three youths came together how their motive become one when did they meet or there is some link between them actually who is the ring master who actually brought them together who actually hired them so that is the big question so definitely what it seems is that that ring master obviously had the main motive and these three only are you know puppets they only were used to eliminate so presumably the ring master is the one that brought them together yeah 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 how did they get uh, such sophisticated weapons both the pistols you know it's rare pistols normal gangsters or criminals can't even uh, afford 5 lakh 7 lakh price gun so how did they get the guns who provided them they are not uh, very affluent criminals or backed by some big gang or something who are providing weapons sophisticated weapons how did they get that so that is the main question uh, police have to uh, get answer also what has been the reaction of the ruling government after this killing they are just trying to prove that the one who is killed atik and ashraf they are dreaded gangsters they are not on the back foot they are not trying to explain that uh, okay this has been uh, committed this has been executed in police custody and it's a failure no no they are not they are just trying to prove that those who are killed are dreaded gangsters they have been murdered by three youths police have nothing to do with that no action has been, has been taken against the police because there is no official word about any one suspended so far no action taken so ruling party is like ministers are saying that 
ये पाप पुण्य का हिसाब यहीं पे होता है एंड ऑल दैट बेसिकली दे सेइंग व्हाट हैपेंड वाज डिवाइन जस्टिस डिवाइन जस्टिस टाइप्स सो दे आर नॉट एक्सप्लेनिंग समथिंग हैज गॉन रॉन्ग और पुलिस फेलियर एंड नो नॉट अ सिंगल स्टेटमेंट हैज कम सो फार एंड आल्सो वी हैव सीन 183 एनकाउंटर्स सिंस द बीजेपी गवर्नमेंट हैज कम टू पावर इन द स्टेट बट यू नो एनकाउंटर्स हैव हैपेंड अर्लियर एज़ वेल सो व्हाट इज द डिफरेंस दिस टाइम actually this is happening frequently very frequent as compared to previous governments or previous years this started uh, in say in 2017 when bjp came to power it happened every year the number of police encounters increased only so when bjp completed its first term in 2022 and uh, got the second term in 2022 so now the numbers are 183 so obviously if we scan the records of previous years i think uh, what this yogi government has done in just 6 years other uh, governments would have done in 15 years or something such a big number 183 is and bhupendra finally could you talk about just the kind of concerns these killings raise especially the kind that we saw in atiq's and ashraf's case obviously if such shootout is taken place when an accused and under trial is in police custody that too in a heavy police force security and someone suddenly appear there and start shooting and then police is like on lookers police are just standing as on lookers like others like common men they are just standing there they did nothing so that is dangerous actually it's dangerous for democracy but uh, up police say that it is part of maintaining law and order it is required you are listening to three things by the indian express today's show was written and produced by me shashank bhargav and was edited and mixed by suresh pawar if you like the show then do subscribe to us wherever you get your podcasts you can also recommend the show to someone you think will like it share it with a friend or someone in your family it's the best way for people to get to know about us You can tweet us at Express Podcast and write to us at podcast at IndianExpress dot com.